Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Fedora Linux 36. I've just finished setting it up on my virtual machine and we're going to go ahead and take a look. So start using Fedora Linux. And as you can see, we have a brand new wallpaper for Fedora Linux 36. It's beautiful. And on first boot, this is what you get. So GNOME 42, the desktop environment that Fedora uses, is one of the biggest highlights and I'm going to take a tour along with you guys. I like how GNOME does this. It kind of gives you an overview. So it tells you to press the super key to open windows and apps, which is the default view that you get when you boot up your machine. Next up, we have just type to search. So press super, start typing anything you want and it'll open up. Next, we have keep on top with workspaces. So again, you press super, you can change your workspaces and that is fast and easy and simple. Uh, don't worry about the lack of animations because it's a VM, so it's not GPU accelerated. Next, yeah, touchpad gestures. Now Fedora uses Wayland, a compositor, which is very modern and it supports touchpad gestures, which on a laptop is amazing. And that's it for the introduction. So let's go ahead and talk about why Fedora should be used because Fedora releases every six months. It updates, uh, it gets, you have a new operating system every six months and you get the latest packages. Um, you get the latest Linux kernel. So this Fedora comes actually with the kernel 5.17, which is latest. And you also have one of the biggest number of packages because Fedora uses .rpm and you have a lot of packages available, which is only next to the .deb or the Debian packaging format. Uh, but if you don't know what all that means to you, doesn't matter. Most people nowadays use flat packs, but that is something to be concerned about. Uh, so yeah, let's quickly dive right in. I'm going to give you a tour of the GNOME desktop environment because that is what is very important. That is what people will be interacting with. So uh, if you have used Fedora in the past, you can see uh, these tiny little flowy over things. They're not here. This is, this is just, it's just a straight line now, which IMO looks pretty. Uh, on the left, you have your activities button. So this opens up your view for workspaces. If you click on the middle, you have your date and time, you have your notification panel, your calendar, your events, you can add world clock, select weather location, you can also turn on do not disturb. On the right, you have a tiny little panel which is sort of like a control center, but a minimum quick access control center. So you have your volume controls, you have your internet connections, you have your power settings. So these are new. This gray box inside a black box. This is new in GNOME 42. So this separates the highlighted content from the background content. It is, it provides a better view. You can also go into power settings from here. Obviously you can enter settings. You can lock your computer. You can power it off or you can log out. Let's dive into the applications. But before that, as you saw, this is the standard Fedora desktop. This is your dock. You hit the super key and you get your doc. So if I click on it, this is your list of applications that Fedora comes with or that GNOME actually provides. So this is a beautiful list. Let's say you want to have multiple applications open in different workspaces. So you could put contacts in here. You could put weather in here and it'll automatically create another workspace because this is currently set to dynamic workspaces. And uh, so without going through all of that, this is pretty generic stuff for GNOME 42. A lot of the apps are updated. Let's dive headfirst into settings. Now settings is where the magic happens. This has been updated. If you are coming from Fedora 35, you might notice that this looks different. Yes, you are correct. This is because it is no longer using Advita, but it has switched over to Libid Vita and the settings app and other apps that are using Libid Vita have received a makeover of sorts and IMO. This looks much more modern and much more, much more fluent for a modern desktop environment. Now let's quickly go to appearance and show you what's changed. So GNOME 42, one of the biggest highlights is actually having a system wide dark mode and 
Well, you could enable dark mode by using extensions before, but now it's officially available. And this tab named Appearance is also new. The name is new, not the entire tab. So if I click on dark mode, as you can see, the wallpaper is changed and you have a few other selection of wallpapers which have their dark and light counterparts. So as you can see, uh, this looks amazing. I prefer this wallpaper, so I'm going to stick with this. And let's go down to about. Let's see what's new in Fedora 36 this time around. So as you can see, uh, this is the GNOME 42 beta version, and we are using Wayland as the windowing system. Now, if you don't want to use Wayland, you could always switch back to X11. Uh, you could change a config file, or every time you try to log in, you could always change it to X11. But from Fedora 36, one of the biggest changes is that even if you are using an NVIDIA graphics card, you will be defaulted to a Wayland session because, believe it or not, Wayland has come along way and it is getting continuous improvements and Wayland is stable and you can reliably use it. Well, some people might prefer X11 like for Zoom and other apps, but for most of the time you could get away with using Wayland just fine. And this is what makes Fedora special, right? It's got the latest kernel, it's got a healthy combination of bleeding edge software and stability. It updates every six months. That's the beauty. You get not a stale operating system, as well as it being very stable. So yeah, let's let's move ahead. Let's quickly go through some of the other parts in Fedora 36 in the settings panel. So you have your network, which is now it's wired because it's inside a VM. You have your Bluetooth settings, appearance I already showed you. You have your notifications. So now you can set it to DND. You can enable or disable lock screen notifications. And you also have per app notification control. So if I click on clocks, you can see I can enable or disable notifications, sound alerts, notification pop-ups, show message content in pop-ups. Well, you might not want to enable this for some apps. You can have lock screen notifications. You can also show the message content on lock screen. And it makes sense that these two are turned off by default. For something like weather, you could turn it on. For something like Signal or any other messaging app, you would want to keep them turned off. Now here is your search. Now again, you, you have your application search, which is pretty, pretty amazing. So you can type, uh, you can start typing anything and it'll show up. And it'll even show the sub menus, as you can see. So applications, power removal, media, you know, search is very powerful. In here, you have multitasking. So this is your hot corner. You could go in here and uh, basically if you put your mouse cursor in here, it's not working right now because it's inside of a VM again. But this would open your workspaces view. And again, you can also have active screen edges. So you could put a window here and you can snap them to the left or right like that. Coming down, we have workspaces. As you already saw, it was set to dynamic workspaces. You could make it fixed, but leaving it on the default is a good option. And you could also change whether you want the workspaces to be displayed on your primary display or on all of your displays. Under applications, you have a ton of things. So each and for every application, you can change search and notifications. You could also open the apps and you can also view the details. Let's view the details for calendar, shall we? So this opens the GNOME software. So this opens the GNOME software and this takes us to the home page for the app. So, this, so that's, that's pretty handy. You have your screenshots. You have a little description. It shows you the installed size. It shows you that it's safe and it's for the desktop. It also shows you an age reading and the version. So this is GNOME 42 release candidate, basically. And this is a community build. It takes you to the project website. You can also report an issue on GitLab. And you have a couple of reviews. So that is fantastic. Now we are going to come back to GNOME settings just a minute later. But for now, uh, this is mostly about GNOME settings. If you are familiar with GNOME settings, you already know all of these things. So I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, and let's jump straight into GNOME software. In dark mode, it looks fantastic. This is an updated version. I believe they updated this in GNOME 41. And now this is coming with Libid Vita in GNOME 42. And it looks fantastic. Uh, I have a ton of updates. I'm not going to bother with them, obviously. Uh, you have 
everything beautifully laid out into big banners and nicely colored categories. So this really is attractive to the eyes. Now, before I move away from the GNOME software app, there is something I need to show you. Now, this is a new and enhanced screenshot tool in GNOME 42. This will blow your mind away. This is the new UI for taking a screenshot for a particular selection, for your entire screen, for a particular window. But the kicker is you now have the option to record your screen. And again, you can take a tiny selection. You can take your entire screen. This is an upgrade to what we had before, which was, which was just a simple screenshot tool. And you can also choose to show your pointer or hide it during your screen record. Moving on to the file manager. Now, even a few days ago, file manager was using the old Advita, but now it looks like it has been updated to the current libadvita. And well, I don't think I need to tell you this, but you can see it for yourselves. Yes, we don't have bland beige icons anymore. This is a two-tone blue and I absolutely adore this icons. So now let's talk about a few other apps that are new. Let's go to text editor. Now, as you can see, this is not gedit. This is a completely new text editor. And I like it. Honestly, I like it. It's simple. It's uh, got the new Libid Vita theme and I love it. Absolutely. You can change it to a white theme and Yep, the contrast looks good. The selection looks good. You can change your settings from here. Uh, so if I go to about, as you can see, this is text editor. This is not gedit. And another new thing in GNOME 42 is the terminal. So uh, let's quickly dive into the terminal and see if this is the new terminal app. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, let's check in about and no, this is still the old terminal app for GNOME 41, but if you check out my other video on GNOME 42 desktop environment that I did quite a few days ago, you will see that GNOME 42 actually has an updated version for the um, for the terminal, which is probably console, if I remember the name correctly. And now that is using obviously the libadvites theme and it's a new and improved version of their older terminal app. But now one thing to note is that this is not the exact latest beta version, which is why you see a lot of the updates in the GNOME software. Uh, I downloaded this on 27th March, this ISO, and tomorrow uh, Fedora 32 is going to be released as the beta version to the public. So I imagine all of these will be updated to include the latest software from their repositories. And so with that, guys, we come to the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your time. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.